Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and I have missed the absolute shit out of the map mob. We aren't officially back. I'm going to be making uh, a comeback, so to speak, in September. Early September, I'll let you guys know uh, when one of the first polished videos uh, will be dropping on this channel. For those, real quick, a recap. For those who uh, don't know, I recently moved. I'm going to be... Uh, changing up some of the content, we're having more polished content coming to the channel. That's this one, as well as transitioning in and out of uh, videos similar to this. When we talk about what's on our minds when it comes to things in pop culture, uh, movies and video games and stuff like that. And there's going to be a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I'm putting up on my personal channel. That's going to be the Ronnie Hayes channel. That stuff will show the new apartment. You'll see a little of it on this channel. But for those interested, you'll have to be subbed to both channels uh, to get, you know, the full amount of videos. Now, before we dive into the main topic for today, and I'm only doing this because I've gotten an overwhelming amount of people asking me about my thoughts and opinions about the new Star Wars trailer. Uh, but before we dive into this main topic, a little shout out. The Doomsday Kingdom issue number four has been available now for a few weeks. That's the physical copy. Everything on the website is in hand, which means when you order, it ships within a day or two. And it's shipping fast. It's our new structure now where we're only shipping stuff we have. No more pre-orders. And if something goes temporarily out of stock, just check the production timeline and you'll get a little update on when restock will be back in. All right, now let's move along to the rise of Skywalker. This trailer here, I'm going to have to just shut this uh, music down. I'm sure you guys have already seen this trailer a little bit. Uh, just a little refresher because I think the main thing that throws me off a bit is the end which is probably going to be just a vision anyway or a dream sequence or something now i just want to point this out uh, daisy daisy ridley has this you know very um boxy face she's got you know a very square um uh, a certain look to her jawline and her cheeks she doesn't have like this crackhead look like later on in the trailer when she's like Darth Ray or whatever the hell that's supposed to be with her ridiculous lightsaber. But she doesn't have that crackhead look to her later on. So I'm assuming it's just a vision. I don't think they would create like Kylo Ren. He's not going to, you know, create a, <laughs> a, I don't know, like his own Ray since Ray shot him down. He's not going to create his own little Ray, is he? Disney, I wouldn't put it past them, but anyway, so here's a nice visual of what looks like a Star Wars uh, fair or event or celebration or something. Uh, this is actually really cool as far as the scenery. There's a lot in here that I do like, and it's a shame for me as a fan. It's a shame so much got ruined with uh, The Force Awakens. It only got ruined after the fact because that is a connective storyline just by itself. Even when I watch it just by itself, it really relies heavily on the complete story. And again, that's my own personal opinion. And once the, the, um, uh, what a, I don't even remember the last Jedi. Once that came out, that really hurt the force awakens again, in my opinion, because the, um, the repeat, the copy and pasting of the storytelling, with not just the last Jedi, but uh, the Force Awakens, especially, especially, it was like okay, they're they're playing it safe, they're copy and pasting shit here. But then when the last Jedi came around and they did just shit all over the older characters and brought forth newer characters that weren't even interesting, didn't have good story or character character development, older characters were just stupid. It was weak and pathetic storytelling just all around. Anyway. So we got Leia in the woods here. I think I heard them say they're only using footage they had from The Force Awakens. So that's footage from The Force Awakens, but they probably did CGI on her clothing to change it up a bit. Did CGI on the background to change that background. What else we have? I, I do love these shots. There's a lot of shots 
Star Wars wise that visually the atmosphere and this is why it, it's a shame man because I love the look of this yes they go overboard and this is another problem that uh, Marvel movies have in a way a lot of superhero movies in general not just Marvel I shouldn't have said that because DC has this problem as well but a lot of superhero stories in um, movies in particular have this problem where they they all think we need some magical box or magical destruction device magical weapon magical something that they got to you know, one person's got to get, another person's got to stop them, then destroy it, and yada, yada, yada. And on top of that, it's always like this big world-ending event. It's like they can't think of anything else. As far as storytelling-wise, they have no other fresh or unique or different ideas whatsoever. Anyhow, so this looks cool, but I think it's just, it's just overboard. They're overcompensating for something. Like, is, I don't know, maybe six or seven of them. Because these are fucking huge. Don't forget. You know, if you're a person, you're an ant. You're a little itty bitty ant on this. Is that Star Destroyer? Do I got that right? I mean, look at this shit. That's a little out there. Even for Star Wars. I don't know who this new character is. I'm actually surprised that's not uh, Rose Tico, to be honest. Because they they can't just hack her out of this one, right? <laughs> It comes to an end. No, it's not. Maybe for these characters, but Star Wars is going to be around forever. I guess this is... People are saying this is going to be an evil uh, C-3PO, which, again, I don't understand what the what the point of that is. Uh, it would have to relate somehow with the story because what would be the point in the last movie to just give him some evil brain or something or upgrade? Um, I'm trying to gauge this this does look like a big rock mountain not like a smaller one but huge especially by the um i don't know it's it's tricky it looks like a miniature that is also made to look like this is a big mountain as if people only stand like this tall or something you know what i'm saying so that's a little tricky but yeah that's clearly a weapon of mass destruction obviously and then we have ray being a little uh, either angry or she's training. She has her, this red bandana. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is. The red bandana, maybe that is to as a, a method of training. Since the, the lightsaber just burns everything, maybe having that bandana and doing certain movements. If you burn off, off a part of the bandana, you're you know m messing up in your training. Again, I have no clue. That's never been in a Star Wars movie before. Not that I remember. Anyway, so it looks like she struck this tree. And then she threw the lightsaber. I don't know if she meant to throw it at this ball, the training ball, and missed. Yeah, you know what? Look at that. She did. She throws it at the ball, and it hits the tree. I guess it missed the ball. Maybe it hit the ball. I was thinking she tried throwing it at the ball, and it dodged it. She, the lightsaber hits the tree. And then she uses the ball being distracted and she grabs this stick and stabs the training ball with the stick or something because she's here training. So, But it looks like if you look here, she's clearly using this stick and she had a staff in The Force Awakens. So it fits this character. And again, that little bandana, maybe it's for training purposes, but she jabs the stick into the training ball and then she, and this is all quick at the same time. Now she's grabbing her lightsaber that's coming back to her from whatever. And this is probably where Leia sees her and they have like one final moment or talk, you know, maybe she's training and then Leia is, she turns around after she does some epic, cool, badass move and then Leia spots her and they have a little talk. And that's the end of, um, I would imagine, Leia's storyline. Maybe she's going to... I don't know. I don't know how they're doing that with Leia's character. Anyway, we got Kylo Ren walking like a badass. Got his lightsaber here. Hits the ground. I do like that look. Again, the cinematography and some of the visuals. This I do think is beautiful. This shit I love visually. Even though story-wise, I do think uh, the, la the last... Um, Jedi was just so painfully mind numbingly terrible when it comes to 
the story, you still have a lot of people on the team that are doing incredible work. You know what I'm saying? So obviously some scenes are going to look amazing. Like this looks incredible. Just absolutely incredible. I love the look and the idea of it. They're fighting on top of, I'm assuming this is, since we know Emperor Palpatine is going to be back now, I'm assuming this is the ship or the Death Star. Wait a minute. Star Destroyer, Death Star. The Death Star that uh, blew up in, the, in Return of the Jedi. And this is the one where Vader threw Emperor Palpatine over the thing. Is it Palpatine? Am I saying that right? I am exhausted, so I, I already know I messed up a couple times, but <laughs> anyhow, yeah, so again, visually, there's some beautiful stuff, and I think this is where we get into some really ridiculous stuff, yeah, here we go, we get into this ridiculous moment, I guess we can have a little bit of sound, I don't think that would hurt, yeah, this application wise this is fucking stupid this is so stupid just enough we got a lightsaber you got a lightsaber with a hilt on it just chill out man i know when i was younger when i was like 17 or 18 when the the prequels were coming out i was really big in the martial arts i mean really big i trained hours and hours a day you know i had a full-time job i did school and then I, the, all my free time, I would just train nonstop. And one thing that I had uh, a lot of training in was the nunchucks, right? Mikey was my favorite Ninja Turtle. I uh, loved Bruce Lee. And I used to do all his uh, movements from the movies with nunchucks. And I always thought it would be badass, you know, in my little fanfic mind to have nunchucks with lightsabers at the end of them for, uh, you know, a, a Star Wars movie. Someone said something when I was younger about Bruce Lee being in one of the Star Wars movies. That would be, like, cool, or maybe that was an idea that someone had. And I was like, yo, that would be badass to have lightsabers at the end of your nunchucks. Now, this right here, if you look at just how this is designed, you would be holding this lightsaber. It's essentially this one lightsaber, which, yes, the... the design of this isn't smooth like a normal one it is actually kind of uh wild like kylo ren's so i don't know anyway you would be holding the lightsaber there'd be this little attachment you can barely see it in this video but in the picture i think it's clearer yeah right here in this image look at this you're holding one lightsaber there's this little attachment piece and then there's this whole other lightsaber just stuck there. This in no way, in no way whatsoever should this even exist, even for a friggin' Star Wars movie. Imagine, go, get a broom and just pretend like it's a friggin' lightsaber and imagine another one stuck to it. You, you can't do shit with that. You know what I mean? It would be so awkward and clumsy. It looks stupid. When I first looked at this, I was like, well, first I thought it was just a double blade. Because you see the double blade and, and it's like, wait, okay. And then when you notice it's two lightsabers, I'm just like, what is the point? Yeah, right here. Okay, it's a double blade. Well, that's, how's that happening? And then you see it's two lightsabers. She does this little flick, and look how she looks like a little bit of a crackhead now. Uh, what's the word for it? Is it taunt or something like that? Where she, it looks like she was starving. She looked, uh, you know, a little more healthy here. See what I mean about her square box chin? At first, I was like, yo, this ain't even Daisy Ridley. It doesn't even, it has that her look, you know? But then I, I, I'm like, that's not even Daisy, Daisy Ridley. She doesn't have that, those same features. She looks really skinny here. Anyway, so she just flicks this down. So it turns into a Darth Maul's lightsaber. You know what I mean? Just do that. <laughs> Anyhow, somebody on YouTube, I posted this and I was like, nope. Just nope. This right here is fucking stupid. And again, it's probably going to be a vision. But imagine how dumb it will look if she's holding this stupid ass weapon with two blades out only to unfold it and reveal it's Darth Maul's weapon. You know, it's not actually his, but you know what I'm saying. It's a double edged lightsaber. So you're you're just you folded it in half to what? Pretend like you had an, a new and unique idea. 
only to unfold it and go, nah, psych, we're just using, you know, <laughs> the old stuff anyway. Anyway, this person, this YouTube channel, it's called the Action Movie Kid, made a video where she flips this out. Go ahead and watch it. Look it up and watch it. She flips this out, and it's like a Swiss Army lightsaber. I was dying when I, when I seen that. <laughs> I was fucking dying. Anyway, so... Yeah, we can get rid of that pick and this pick. And again, look at her. She just looks a bit skinny. And Daisy Ridley's always got her mouth open. I mean, always. But her mouth is uh, shut here. So that's clearly not Daisy Ridley. <laughs> I'm teasing. Anyway, uh, what does she got? Some sort of string wrapped around her finger here? I don't know. Man, that's so stupid. Now, the poster... So I, again, I will say, the story is shot, in my opinion. No matter what they do, The Last Jedi was so terrible. No matter what they do, it's shot. When it comes to having beautiful moments or visuals, sure, there's probably going to be a good amount that is visually stunning. Uh, even the score is probably going to be out of this world. As far as running to the theaters, I'm not going to the theaters to see it. I'll wait a week, I'll wait two weeks. If people are raging about it and they're saying, no, this is this is worth going to see in theaters. And listen to me very, very clearly. For me, you know Disney fucked up. For someone like me who grew up on Star Wars as a kid and when the prequels came out, even though I was being a little... You know, tough little know-it-all badass. I, I don't know. What was I, like 15 or 16? You know, I'm into being Mr. Badass, the coolest person in the world. I ain't got time for fucking geeky-ass stupid shit, nerdy shit like Star Wars. I still put my life on hold and was like, fuck, no, I'm going to see Star Wars. You know, I never thought they would ever make another Star Wars. This was a big deal. I enjoyed the shit out of the original trilogy. And then, you know, when the prequels came out, I put my sh bullshit on hold. And I, I was like, nah, I'm about to be a geek again, you know, and I'm going to watch Star Wars. And then when it came time for uh, The Force Awakens, I was like, let's give it another shot because there's a serious company behind it. They've got to be having this three-story this three movie plan where it's all mapped out. And then when I, when I watched the first movie and I was like, wow, it was, I have hope, but it was just a, a copy and paste of a new hope. You know what I'm saying? And then I thought, okay, there's this plan to, to, to give us what we've had before and let us know that star Wars is back. And then they'll take risks with two and three and, and they'll give us what, you know, uh, an epic conclusion, a story that's connected. And, and no, when you look behind the scenes, they apparently wrote The Last Jedi and they, they Ryan Johnson didn't even know what the fuck the first movie was going to be about, The Force Awakens. Look into the behind the scenes. It is so unbelievable. I don't have words for it. I just don't have words for it. Now, this uh, poster as well. So yeah, so long story short, for someone like me to say I have no interest in watching the last, the end of this trilogy, this series, not even a trilogy, the ninth and final movie in the Skywalker saga, for someone like me to say I'm not going in theaters, you know Disney fucked up. Like, you know it. You know what I mean? Anyhow, so maybe in a few, if it's raging and it's crazy... Other than that, I'm just going to red box it. I mean, even for a review, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm probably just going to watch some bootleg clips. If it looks banging, I'll go to the theaters, but if not, I'm, I'm done with Star Wars. Now, apparently, I do like this. It looks like his mask kind of has this lightning, which I did like even in the trailers, that lightning look. Uh, but this poster was pretty embarrassing. They had some little... Um, scandal not really controversy that's the word i'm looking for where it was just one of these hot toys which i'll, I'll say the hot toys are really well made figures i know there was a few videos i saw where people were talking like hot toys are just random 20 dollar toys no these are like two three hundred dollar realistic 
You know, these are high quality. Don't shit on hot toys. They are the bomb. They are the bomb. On the flip side, this is a movie poster for Star Wars, yo. I know you're just it's it's made by just, you know, groups of people who are hired cuz they probably hired this company to put promo posters and images together. And they're probably working with the concept art and other imagery and they someone probably thought, "Okay, they have this poster of the fight. We already saw this from the trailer, so it matches." And they probably just simply wanted an image of Palpatine. And they went and Google searched some and they found one that was like, shit, okay, we're going to touch this up in Photoshop anyway. No one will know. <laughs> Little did they know or realize. Now, that's it for the rise of Skywalker. But when it comes to the Mandalorian, holy shit. I'm still not buying Disney Plus. I'm still going to wait to see what y'all say. If you guys are like, bro. Like, you guys came and said, watch Stranger Things. You guys would not shut up. I went and watched it, loved it. You guys came and would not shut up about The Boys on Amazon. You would not shut up. I went and watched it, and I loved it. If you guys come to me and say The Mandalorian is worth it, I will check it out. I'm most likely going to wait till every episode is out, though. At this point in time, I'm... I am not interested in giving Disney or I am interested in giving Disney as little money as possible. I'm just so done with uh, a lot of the choices they're making. That's a, a video for another day, but I just want to give them as little of, as my money as, as po absolutely possible. But the Mandalorian looks great. Even this beginning intro here with the stormtrooper helmets on the pikes. I mean, I, I'm digging that look and the vibe of it. There's, not a whole lot, but the visuals for a show like this look, oh my god, I'm digging that. I mean, hardcore. Now, the story and the characters are incredibly important. I had to laugh. This is, I sent this image to my brother. I was like, yo, Dean, yo, it's our dad. <laughs> this, he looks just like my dad, but black. So, I like Carl Weathers. Also, the guy who plays Gus Fring, he's in this too. What was that? Cracked City. I uh, I thought this chick was yeah right here. I someone told me a while ago this chick was the the Mandalorian or something. Now I'm hoping and praying to God that's not right because isn't this that wrestler or something? And isn't this I might have her confused, but I'm pretty sure she was in a movie. And I saw it, and it was probably some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my life. Like, the room was better. Again, unless I'm mixing this up. Uh, I hope I'm mixing this up. Because if she's the friggin' Mandalorian, which... And if she's the same one I saw, or I'm remembering from that other movie, then, oh, God help us all, you know? Anyway. Yeah, I like this little uh, wink here. Again, I like the little vibe vibe and the look i don't know if this content is going to get struck down because we're showing too much but i'm gonna take the chance because there's yeah so we get again it's not the same it's not boba fett and ig88 this th those are characters from the original this is a different uh, mandalorian and this is um, IG something it's not the same guys but still it gives you that touch of nostalgia it's using technology from today and showcasing this robot in action like they could never do before. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's it's neat. It's basic. I always thought that was a stupid design for a robot, but it's neat seeing something from the original. I always loved the design of the Stormtroopers. That's something else that uh, really annoyed me with the, the First Order Troopers. They looked so sleek and stylish and dumb. I like the look of these. They have that look to them, that Star Wars look. However, they've got this grimace, this little frown here. I, I think these are, these are even better than what's being done today with the First Order. The original Stormtroopers, I'll take them any day over... Wait, isn't there supposed to be... Or is that just Boba Fett? For some reason, the helmet doesn't look right to me now without that little antenna. 
I obviously that has something to do with, you know, the, the characters or whatever. But I just wish there, that antenna was there or whatever it was. It just doesn't look right without it. Yeah. And this is badass. This is the part. I knew there was something at the end. So this dude, which I hear is a chick, and it might be that chick, which, oh my god. Anyway, so this bounty hunter pulls this dude with some Batman grappling hook, pulls him closer, shoots out the control panel on the door, and the, the door instantly shuts. Before he can get shot, this guy is chopped up by that door. Now, if it wasn't owned by Disney and someone actually had the balls, a company actually had the balls, and they wanted to make something that was a little darker, we would get a little bit of a, a bloody scene here. But this is most likely going to be the reaction of the patrons going, ooh, and then maybe, maybe an image of some a droid or grumpy worker having to clean it up, but we don't actually see what he's cleaning up. You know what I mean? Maybe you just hear him throw something in a bucket, like a big pail, and we know it's the guy's legs or torso. But that was still a badass a moment there. And then the carbonite, which apparently we're supposed to now think Darth Vader did it on a whim just because that was available and it accidentally create a new way to transport uh, prisoners. If depending on how they do that, it can be an incredibly cool and neat connection with the original trilogy, or it could just be like, all right, you guys are reaching the way they did. That was pretty dumb. Now it looks like there's a few different people. This guy right here does look, the way his face looks like the Jeepers Creepers monster, but uh, the way his mouth is shaped and his nose, uh, his jacket just right here. Uh, where's that guy? Oh, yeah. It looks like it's this guy. See, his jacket has those same furry things here. See the shape of his mouth? He's just kind of got this look. What is this, a metal? I'm not really sure if we see no metal or nothing. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it, he could have taken the metal off or stole it or whatever, but... Uh, and it looks like there might be some sort of drool or liquid coming from his eyes and mouth. That's pretty neat. It doesn't matter. Mandalorian looks really good. It, it does. They didn't show us a whole hell of a lot, but it looks good. It's something that I am interested in. But after I hear from you guys, the fans, you, you're watching it, it's good or it's not, and then you guys let me know if it's good or not. And then I'll probably check it out. When it comes to Star Wars, I'm interested in, in seeing how Episode Nine plays out. But again, for me, it's more along the lines of it's only because I, I, grew, I grew up on it and I watched all the others. I might as well see how they're going to, you know, shit out this final movie even if it gets some cool visuals fine but i'm not in a rush to go to the theaters i'm gonna red box it there's no way i'm fighting crowds to watch the rise of skywalker i mean get the fuck out of here so i'll probably red box it or see it right before it's about to come out of theaters when there's no crowds or people or nothing and same thing with the mandalorian i'm really excited for that that actually looks like it's something separate that I'll enjoy. New characters, I'm happy about that. That way they're not messing with any other characters that were already pre-established for the most part. I don't, I don't, I'm not keeping up with the times. I don't know if there's any cameos. So, no, I, get some chicken? I don't know if there's any cameos. So, some chicken? No, bro. Yeah. So, all right, you guys, give me your thoughts and opinions. I got to go get my daughter some chicken, obviously. <laughs> thoughts and opinions in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in September. Don't forget, I'm going to make a few more videos, but I'll see you in September uh, for the beginning of the more polished content. Uh, it's going to come out slow, obviously. And then, uh, we'll, depending on how you guys feel about it, we'll put out more and more of it. Thoughts and opinions down below. I'm done talking. It's your turn.